Y254. Imagine. Welcome back. Uh, it's Entrepreneurship Tuesday right here on Y in the morning at Y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platforms. At Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. As simple as that, right? All right. So in this particular session, we are looking at the recreational business. So uh, in this particular interview, <laughs> we are looking at ways we can empower the youth through a sports center that you're going to have a conversation about. So it's all about sports, re recreational activities that may uh, turn out to be great business ideas. In studio, I am joined by the founder and also the managing director for Pamoja Multisports Academy, known as Miss uh, Jan, 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 Jan Beth Wamboy Mushir. I hope I got that right. Yes. Thank yes. you guys for creating time to be with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Maybe I can start with you, sir. Uh, allow me to give you this opportunity to introduce yourself and uh, tell us more about Pamoja Multisports Academy. Oh, my name is uh, ex Corporal Masbati. Pamoja Multisports International Academy was founded in the year 2008. Um, the vision of Pamoja Multisports International Academy is to empower our society through sports and education. Our mission is to nurture talent from the grassroots to the international All right, level. but we could just hold on uh, to the mic properly so we yeah. can get more on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, the, our mission is to tap talent from the grassroots All and right. nurture it to the to uh, professional levels. Our goal is to be in the Olympics. We began this journey 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Yes. yes. Oh. And now we are, we are expecting to have our first Olympian from the academy by the year 2028. Okay. Well, we'll get more into that. Thank and you. just uh, find out. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to uh, also explain expound on uh, why you felt that how did you join the sports center and uh, uh, what, why, what, what felt within yourself that you actually need to be part of this uh, recreational activity center? Uh, personally I've always um, wondered because um, I'm, I have a, I, I love developing people okay. uh, it is my passion I love to see people grow from one point to the next and I'm always, um, I've always loved the fact that we've got so many foundations that, um, that do support children. And we have, but we have foundations that support the A-level, you know, like the, this, the kids who is getting, who is very bright, the kid who is getting uh, A. And I've always wondered, what about the kid who's getting D and E? Okay. Who is supporting those kids? Who's supporting the child who, um, yes, they, 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 are, they have a, a, a certain capability, but they're not very good in school. So what's happening to that child? And that you'll find it, that is the bigger majority of our children. That's the bigger majority of our, of our society. So with that, I, I found that recreation and Sports is okay. another way for getting the children to know that I'm not, after all, I'm not that, I'm not worthless. I can give something back to the society. I can make money or I can make a living out of who I am today. Great. And yeah. the fact that you've mentioned that uh, you're tapping onto the skills and talent, yes. talents of these young people. Mm -hmm. uh, probably going back to you, uh, Mr. Nes Masumbati, uh, before Pamoja uh, uh, Sports Center, what were you doing? Because I have heard you mention the ex couple and you were very specific <laughs> on adding that title <laughs> of this conversation. <laughs> yes. Uh, before getting into Pamoja, I was uh, in the military. I joined the military when I was 18 years of age. Right. So all my working life has been in the Kenya Defense Forces, uh, at um, the Kenya Air Force as a military police. Okay. So I retired uh, five years ago after three years of non-active 
service and 18 years of active service total i have served this country for 21 years 21 wow yes. that's two decades over two decades yes. all right uh, before pamoja and uh, while you were still in service uh, growing up mm -hmm. did you feel like you were so much constrained in exploring your talents and what imp uh, actually influenced you to start up to start up a center for the youth uh, basically i was a, a hyper active child Oh, it's quite the opposite. Yes. <laughs> okay. I was a hyperactive child. The child who will be in everything. Uh, it, if we go to Mutani, Bano, Kati, <laughs> Mungare Ngare, all those kind of stuff. Growing uh -huh. up in Eastlands, right. I was an outdoor guy. Mm -hmm. And um, by the time I, I was around, uh, around six years, Mm. Bruce Lee was the thing mm -hmm. at our time during our time. Bru so everyone was everybody wanted to be like Bruce Lee. So for me, I really looked for somewhere I could be trained in martial arts to become like Bruce Lee, but I never got because where we are living in Umoja, there was no social hall, no nothing to to offer such kind of things okay. until we moved to Isli, mm -hmm. where I stumbled up on boxing, which I started at St. Teresa's uh, Catholic Church in Italy. And then from there, uh, I after, after boxing, there was Taekwondo. And after boxing, I would peep. I was around 14 years of age now. Eh? I would peep through the windows, and I'll see this is fun, kicking. <laughs> and I want to be that guy mm -hmm. who can fly with kicks. So I decided to leave boxing and join Taekwondo. Now it is almost 30 years. Do you regret taekwondo. it? Of course not. Okay. It is the best thing that happened in my life because I was identified when I was in high school by the military. I was scouted from school. I was at St. Teresa's Boys High School in AC. Mm -hmm. So I was identified from there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, immediately after Form 4, I only stayed home for four months. Then oh I was yeah. called to the military. And through the journeys, through the work in sports, I, did, uh, I have been able to travel the world, 13 countries in total, because of sports. So this is the best thing. If I was to rewind the clock, mm -hmm. I'll start where I began. Oh, wow. It's the way to go for the young people. Yeah. yeah. So back to you, uh, Ms. Mushiria. Uh, um, yeah? Yes. Let me, I'd like to find out for any, any other sort of business, there's always the target uh, audience. Mm -hmm. When it comes to uh, the sports center, mm -hmm. who, you, who, who are the guys that you're targeting in this particular business? Because mm -hmm. on the other side of it, even though it's an empowerment sort of a business, mm -hmm. it goes back to you have to make profit. Yes. It's, at the end of the day, it's... It's recreational business. So, yes. who are your target uh, market? Uh, our target market actually cuts across uh, from the very low, like you've had with top talent, and then we go up to the middle class, where that's where we have uh, a larger crowd, and then the upper class. But the main, uh, our main core business is based on the middle class uh, level. Um, because we, we feel like uh, we have people who are talented, but some sports are just designated for the rich. Right. Uh, so we want to break that. So you can, you can, like now when you look for swimming or lawn tennis, it's only for the, the who's, yeah? So we want to bring, remove that bar and open the market to other kids and other, everybody else so that you don't have uh, an Olympian who is a swimmer who is only coming from the rich. Okay. You can have an Olympian who is a swimmer who is in the middle class or the lower class. Right. Yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We'll get much more information on how you guys are actually helping the underprivileged in the society when mm -hmm. it comes to these particular opportunities. Back mm -hmm. to you, Mr. Nesmus. I'd like to find out, for someone who is watching this conversation and they would love to get into the recreational business, what sort of educational background does one need to have? Or if there's any skills or any information? Uh, education is, um, you are taught uh, literate skills. But getting into business, we don't need an education. Even if you are illiterate, you can get into business. 
you have seen PH holders teaching business administration in universities, yet they cannot run a kiosk. So business is nothing about education. I usually say just follow your passion and money will come. As simple as that. Follow your passion, money will come. Follow your passion, money will come. Yeah, I think that's an advice we can all take home. <laughs> So for anyone uh, who is watching this, the young people, they, are, they may be asking, how can we be part of Pamoja Sports Center? And they'll be wondering, what are, what, are the, what are the particular ways and the process should I, should I go through in order to be part of this recreational center? Um, at the moment, we, we usually just scout open. We don't, we don't usually say, oh, you have to be in this manner because also it is a leisure recreational center okay. so if you come and you feel like oh i just want to do swimming like because that's a part that's now part of the of the business now if you want to just come and you want to be a swimmer or you just want to be fit we have a lot of activities that do uh, cater for just general fitness which is yoga swimming uh, zumba all those things that keep you just fit okay. that's the business side of it mm -hmm. but for the academy side of it as we are we go out and we we see as we are training even as like say for example if you come and you train and we say actually she's quite good at ABCD we can advise you you can take your 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 talent or your interest to the next level so even as the kids come uh, like now we're having the open week where we just open it to everybody all the kids and you're able to tell well, that one is very good at Taekwondo and so you you advise the parent and tell them this one you can actually go somewhere with them with Taekwondo this one you can take them with the swimming so normally it's open first okay. and then we start seeing and we don't we don't want to uh, excite you and tell you yeah you can be an athlete mm -hmm. and yet we can see you have the struggles so we'll just look at you and see where your talent falls oh, and advise so accordingly yeah okay you're actually being honest with the clients yes. and actually uh taking them through a particular process just to see their capabilities yeah and uh, back to you mr uh, nesmus i'd like to get a glimpse of uh, the sports center the training uh, training services she has mentioned a couple of sports she's yes. mentioned swimming a part of uh, tennis so probably you could just give us a glimpse of the services and also the tra training uh, at the academy Okay. Uh, when we began this journey in the year 2000, uh, I traveled to Korea for the World Military Games to participate in Taekwondo. So when we were in Seoul, I was shocked at how big Taekwondo business was in, um, in Korea. And I realized this thing I can take it back home <laughs> and assist others, Eastlanders like me. You know, we are condemned by society. Nothing good can come out of Eastlands. Huh? And I thought I can prove that we the society wrong because some of us have come from there. So we began as a Taekwondo Academy, Top Kick Taekwondo Academy in the year 2000. Uh, through the process, the feedback we got from parents because my kid loves Taekwondo. What you're doing is very good. But his brother doesn't want Taekwondo. His sister wants something else, swimming, tennis, uh, something different. So I'm in this quagmire wondering, what can I do to be able to take care of a whole family so that when they come in, they are one-stop center? So by I did a lot of research and uh, feasibility studies and how to go about all this, and uh, decided to form a multi-sports academy. That is how Pamoja Multi-Sports Academy was born in the year 2008. Okay. Um, fast forward, you could not start with everybody, everything because of resources. So we began with the very basic, taekwondo, football, swimming. Uh, those were the basics that we began with from 2008, up to around uh, 2015, okay. we are just measuring on those three. 2015, gave birth to skating, uh, netball, volleyball, and uh, badminton. Okay. Uh, as we continued to train the last five years, now we had covered the sports sphere. 
in terms of just dream any spot you want will deliver it to you at your doorstep. Impressive. Yes. Very impressive. Yeah, you want ice skating, will deliver it to you. You want golf, will deliver it to you. Then there was this other thing that came up. Uh, my child is not an uh, outdoor child. Uh, why do you, uh, or my child wants art, okay. music. And uh, now I have to bring a child here, drop one or two here, and then I have to rush to somewhere else to drop the other child. Okay. So today, September 1st, we have launched our international segment of the academy, mm -hmm. which includes art and music. So we want to play any kind of instrument, art, drama, acting, modeling, we are one stop. It's totally the leisure sports. Uh, leisure sport for leisure space that it is for yes. every sort of sport uh, and entertainment that yes. I've seen that. Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll get back to that and also there to look at if there's any competition coming up, Olympics and how the youth are actually benefiting from that. I'd like to come back to you, Miss Mushire, back to you. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms., uh, Mr. Uh, Nesmus has mentioned something very important when it comes to sports and the fact that there's the society aspect of stigma concerning people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, particular youth coming from a section of a uh, different uh, level or class in mm -hmm. the society mm -hmm. and uh, the stigma from people, of course, from the slums. I would like to find out, apart from the physical uh, wellness, are there mm -hmm. any programs that look at the mental uh, health for these particular young people? Yes, we do have a, 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 a department that deals with um, uh, rehabilitation, actually, and counseling. We found out that the, the athletes, especially the, the athletes themselves, they, have, uh, they end up sometimes, the higher percentage, end up with in drugs. So we have a department that deals with the counseling also. Um, we also have that general counseling for those kids where we know, yes, we have, uh, like na <laughs> when we have the open day, mm -hmm. you'll find that we have kids from the, you know, the, <laughs> uh, the neighborhoods. Okay. And then we have the kids that come in driving. And then now you will see that there's a very big Different difference. Different social class. Yes, mm -hmm. be between the, the, the two groups, because even the behavior is very different. These ones are really rough, and, and these ones are so docile. And you find the parents saying, I, OK, you see. So we find a way to match the two groups. You have to have somebody on the ground mm -hmm. to show that this you know to make the two groups work together mm -hmm. while you're observing that you'll be able to pick and see that child has this and that problem so with time as they, they continue coming you talk to them and most of the time by the end of the the open maybe about a month you find that the two groups have matched the confidence have raised in both sides mm -hmm. and from there if it is more than we need to you know from the ground then we take it up we talk to the parents and then we can induce them to the counseling sessions Amazing. Right. And uh, now, investing in a recreational business, is it a viable source of business? Yes, it is very viable, mm -hmm. but you need to be street smart. Very street smart. Okay. And s these things are not taught in college. You okay. learn them on ground. Probably can give us some tips. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you an example. Two things, eh? I'll give you an example. Okay. By the time 2008, we were taking off of Spamoja Maltzkoff International Academy, mm -hmm. I had started six businesses which all collapsed with almost five million down the drain. Then I read Robert Kiyosaki's book on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And he said that if you want to start a business, look for a business that you are specialist in. And I sat back and thought, hey man, I've been, I've run tax businesses, I've done butcheries, I've sold eggs, I've, I've sold electronics, I've imported torches. Yeah, hey, you're venturing so many. I mean, and since i was born i was a running man i should be doing sports business so by that time in 2008 we had been auctioned 
we were in debts of 2 million minus 2 million i had zero shilling no furniture in the house nowhere to go and with a family of three kids 